I am a Theta healer. I've done shadow work and part of the Kalyon shadow work is about understanding our shadow selves, which is actually the wounded masculine and feminine. And I became very, <coughs> sorry, interested in this topic because um, I uh, per previously thought I was in my masculine energy. And once I started researching the topic, I realized that no, I'm more in my wounded feminine and then the masculine was coming. So it took me years and years to heal all those parts. And um, I'm gonna teach you like a crash course of how you can actually integrate your feminine and masculine and be in the best version of your feminine. And of course, sometimes in your masculine as well, because we need both qualities and attributes in order to have a very balanced life. Now, um, I'm gonna go through the presentation so it's easier for you guys to see it. So by the end of this uh, topic or talk, you will understand how to uh, like integrate your feminine masculine energy, obviously not a huge amount because it's a short talk, but to the extent that I can explain to you and any questions you have always welcome, just put in the box and I will explain. Um, tapping into your feminine energy for more joy, creativity, of course, self-love and the masculine energy. We need to be clear and confident of what we want in order to achieve what we want in our lives. And of course, how we sabotage ourselves, our success, our relationships by coming out of the accurate um, energy and um, using this energy in a self-defeating way. So basically the shadows of feminine and masculine, which I've of course learned like 10 years ago and I published a book about it, about uh, the shadows of feminine and masculine. Now, what is masculine and feminine energy? To understand masculine and feminine, we first need to understand that everything in life is in dualities. So without one duality, we don't understand the other. Now we have feminine and masculine, but it's attributes. And we have light and dark, sun and moon. We have happiness and sadness, positive and negative. And without one, we never understand the other. In feminine and masculine, we need to create a dance of uh, like these polarities. Men and women have both masculine and both feminine energies. Uh, most women are ident identifying with their feminine essence and most men are identifying with their masculine essence or the healthy men, if we say. Um, and when we are our most feminine, we are most happy if we are female and when we're more masculine or we're in our masculine essence, we're more happy as men as well. The point is to achieve the balance. And now to understand balance, everything operates best in balance. In all religions, they, they tell you to pray or meditate, either when the sun is just coming up or when the sun is like going down is the merge of the light and the dark, the middle part that is the best part and the most energizing part. So uh, in order to take in the most energy and to be connected highly, we need to meditate in these times. Now let's look at the story of how the feminine and masculine energy um, operate. Let's pretend we're at the cave times and it's the time where the men used to be, women used to be home and men used to go out. <clears throat> well, the woman was at home. She was cooking, cleaning, taking care of the baby. In order to do all that, she needed to multitask, right? Now, imagine the guy had to go out to hunt for a deer and if he went out to hunt for a deer and he was trying to get the deer and get the rabbit at the same time, what would happen? He would lose focus and he would neither get the rabbit nor the deer. 
The woman, on the other hand, she has to cook, she has to clean, she has to take care of the baby. If she loses focus of any of these aspects, so in order to, if she's focused only on the kid, she can't clean the house. If she's focused only on the house, she will, maybe the baby will hurt itself and it will be hungry. So the, the second aspect of feminine energy is giving love and creativity to everything. So she gave love to her husband. She gave love and emotions to her <coughs> child. And she even gave love to the food she created because in order to be creative, we need to be inspired. Now a man, he couldn't take his emotions out with him. He needed to take his logic because if he took his emotions, he would never kill the deer and he wouldn't bring it back home for his family to eat. So he needed to be logical about it at the time. So these are the qualities that are basically more associated with feminine and masculine. That being said, a woman can focus and also a masculine has emotions, but a very masculine man will prioritize his logic over his emotions. So work will be a priority to him over his emotional needs. And to a woman, the emotional needs are a priority over the logical ones. So that's why say a man who's still not reached where he wants to reach uh, and the level he wants to reach, he will not maybe get married or not get married to the woman he most loves, but he will later marry, um, perhaps later when he's ready to marry and he never married the one he loved deeply, his first love because he wasn't ready. But women, as soon as they're in love, they're ready or most of them anyway. <coughs> so let's look at the story of the creation. So we all came from the great void, the black hole, um, the womb. And let's say the creator, God, the energy, whatever you want to call it, whatever resonates with you, first created the world and he created the world in darkness. That's the energy of creativity because it's in the dark that we're inspired. In meditation, we get inspired. It's the feminine energy, is the feminine essence of creativity. And then he said, let there be light. So the sun is a representative of action. So first you need to create whatever it is. So you need the feminine energy, but then to take it into the world, you need the action of the masculine energy. Imagine we sit home, create dream, dream, dream. If we're fully in our feminine energy, we will never bring that inspiration, that vision into the outside world. And if we're in the masculine energy, we never sit and think about what it is that inspires us, uh, what it is that we want. We will be too much in the action. So sometimes the decisions come from the outside world. What is important to other people, our parents, our friends, what is important to them becomes more important than our vision, our need. So let's look at the importance of masculine and feminine energy. Feminine energies are internal, as we just expressed, and masculine energies are more action-based. We need both, but many, many of us are in balance. Either we have too much drive without enough introspection, or we're good at taking action but we're not good at looking in within us. And others spend too much time contemplating on things that they want, but it's important to always, always, always know what your heart wants and to get into your heart's truest desire and need. So let's look at the feminine and masculine energies. A natural feminine is unconditional love. So that's like the divine feminine, if you like. She's understanding, she's nurturing, she's tender, kind, intuitive, creative, feeling stillness, flow. And on the other side, you have the man with his confidence, inner strength, responsibility, focus, logical support, stability, and all these beautiful aspects. Now, we sometimes go into our wounded, and I will explain it a little bit further why we go into the wounded. But if a man is in his victim mentality, he's in his wounded feminine. 
victim, powerlessness, weakness, manipulation, all feminine energy, codependency is feminine, oversensitivity is feminine, over emotionality is feminine, but is wounded feminine. And I will explain a little bit more why it becomes wounded and how to heal this. And the masculine obviously is dominating, controlling, all these, all of us that have the control issues, that comes from the wound of the masculine. So what is the control issue? The control issue comes from the fear, the fear of trusting, the fear of trusting in ourselves, trusting in our environment. And it all comes from the scars that we had as a child. Um, so somewhere in our childhood, we didn't feel that we can trust the world. Something happened and that trust was lost. And once we lose that trust, we want to control the environment in order to be able to protect ourselves. Now let's look at these two aspects. Balance. Patient, sensitive, responsible, firm, confident, strong. You see both the qualities of masculine and feminine there. But when balance, a quality like that, if it's a female who's patient, sensitive, responsible, firm, confident, and strong, is very attractive. And also, if a man is patient, sensitive, responsible, firm, confident, and strong, he becomes very uh, attractive to us. We ultimately become more attractive. So when we have the balance of these energies in the right way, we become more attractive, we are more able to deal with the difficulties of everyday life, whether in relationships, whether in work. Now let's look at the outer balance. So let's look at if somebody's nervous, timid, weak, bossy, noisy, sarcastic. Whether it's a man or a woman with these qualities, is unattractive, they can't achieve much because we need human aspects, we need the sociability to be able to go to places. If you have your own business even, you need to be able to sell your product in order to go, unless of course you're sitting behind the computer and you have no interaction, in which case your relationships would be difficult, your relationship with your boss, your people working beneath you, all this will be difficult. So how does the shift of the divine or the ultimate um, feminine and masculine go into the wounded? Two things affect that. So the first one is the balance and imbalance of our feminine and masculine. And the second is love by sphere. Now I'm gonna explain these aspects. We are all the balance of feminine and masculine energy, but balance is key. So let's look at the quality of the divine, which I will actually explain again a little bit further. When a woman is in her unconditional love, she's in her divine feminine. Now, if this is imbalanced, what happens is Divine feminine, unconditional love means unconditional acceptance, which also means that we unconditionally accept people whether good or bad, and we can unconditionally love people. Now, if I don't bring in the aspect of masculine energy in this case, what will happen? I need to bring boundary in, boundary setting. If I don't bring the boundary setting in, what will happen is that people will start walking all over me because I will accept them and I will accept people's abuse as well. But what I know how to be kind to myself, kind to others, and if somebody is then disrespecting me or hurting me, to tell them, look, I understand you're going through a bad time or a difficult time, but I'm not your garbage uh, for your emotional garbage or I'm not gonna take in your negative energy. What are you doing? You're in your divine feminine and you're setting your accurate boundaries. So let's look at love by sphere. So we actually looked at the aspect of control. What happens is when we trust the universe, when we trust that everything is for our highest and best, then we are able to surrender. Surrender doesn't mean to not take action. You take the appropriate action, but you believe also whatever's coming to you either has a learning from you 
or maybe there's some benefits in it that you're not seeing. So you look for the best of it, the benefits of it. And like that, you learn from every mistake, every lesson, and you're able to overcome all your challenges. A lot of our fears are actually developed in childhood. So when I work with people, what happens is that we always, always, like 90%, some people don't re remember their childhood, but we end up going to their childhood. And what's happened there is an event has occurred. And from a child's perspective, how we develop or give meaning to an aspect or an issue is very different to what we do as an adult. So when we go to our child, we will see that child, the inner child is still hurt because it's given the incorrect meaning and our subconscious mind is energetically holding on to that incorrect meaning. And that's when, <coughs> sorry, we know in a situation we shouldn't get angry. We shouldn't be upset. It doesn't make sense that we're upset, but we are upset because this scar, this wound is still in our childhood present and we haven't yet healed it. And so in these cases, we act out of fear rather than love. Now, you need to also know when to switch hats. Life is a constant dance of the masculine and feminine. We always bo wear both hats, but we need to know when to switch these hats. Okay. Let's look at the imbalance in the energies making us uh, sabotage ourselves. We start to overreact to things. We push away things that are good for us, whether people like we act in a wrong way with a guy that we like or a woman that we like, or we, we behave in a way we feel unworthy. So we overgive, we become people pleasers. We, we don't receive as well anymore. We're not in the polarity of give and take in a relationship or in our relationships, daily relationship. We deny our own needs. We don't even recognize that we, we judge our needs because somebody else has gasolated us. We think that our needs or we're overreacting because it's, it's wrong, but usually overreaction is you not listening to your needs, you not accepting your needs, you're not acknowledging your own needs. And when you acknowledge your own needs, when you acknowledge your requirements from life, if a person, if your boyfriend, if your husband tells you, oh, that's stupid, you say, you know what? Is my need, is my belief, you can think what you want, but I'm going to respect my needs. That is you putting boundaries and appreciate and not needing your, uh, knowing your needs. Limiting programs or limiting beliefs, if you like, are all created also in our childhood. So for example, what happens is you go to speak to your mother and your mother is too busy. So she, she ignores you or she doesn't talk to you. So as a child, you think, oh, you know, my mother doesn't love me. You, you go to speak to your father, he's just lost his job. He's in a really bad mood. He, he talks badly to you. Or, and if this happens a lot of times, then you feel you don't feel loved from your parents. Even if they loved you in their own little way, you don't feel that love. So you, you come with the belief that I'm unlovable. I'm unworthy of love. I need to prove to others that I'm worthy of their love. Another issue with fears and stuff is procrastination. So if I have a fear, I'm not going to do what I want to do. If I have a fear to create, like to put that vision into the world, into reality, then I would procrastinate. Another way to sabotage yourself is to need to be perfect because we're never perfect. We're always evolving. Look at everything, even scientists prove and disprove their own methods and everything is constantly evolving and growing and getting better and we as humans are always getting better so imperfection is in fact an illusion that we can't all stand up to and we're always this is the big, biggest self lack of self-love is being over critical of ourselves we can't criticize ourselves we can't blame ourselves constantly that doesn't mean you don't um, take responsibility for your actions. It means that I take responsibility. Okay, I made a mistake. This was an experience that I had. 
I will adjust this. I will change this. Now, let's look at what happens in lack of masculine energy that creates obsessive behaviors. Obsessive love is when we don't have masculine energy. We too early fall in love. Why? Because women were dreamers. We dream, we fantasize, we make the man in our, we, we create the ideal man and we project it onto the guy that we're dating. And we don't see that that person is not that. And then we go into a relationship with that person. And the more we, we go on, we get more and more disappointed. Why? Because we didn't fall in love with the person. We fell in love with the idea of the person. So this is usually a very feminine energy to, to become obsessed, to over love, like in my classes, in my courses, in my healing sessions. There are so many women with lots of crazy stories. I've heard uh, stories of a woman uh, taking an investigator to see what happened with the boyfriend. Women who counted their, uh, their Instagram, their boyfriend's Instagram followers and who's connected and who's not connected, writing the names down. Like, like uh, some of these things are cute. Like to me, they're very cute, but it takes a lot of energy out of us, it's drains, draining. And these emotional attachments need to be healed from within. Now, let's see when we don't have feminine energy. Overeating, overexercising, overdrinking, overworking, sexaholics, they, they're missing feminine energy. Eating disorder, missing feminine energy. Why? When we're missing feminine energy, we're not connecting to our emotions. We are not feeling our emotions. We are not going and asking what this emotion means. Why am I having this sadness, this upset, this, this hurt, basically? So let's look at wounded feminine and we will go. So she feels powerless, weakness, manipulation, withholding, neediness, codependency, oversensitivity, over emotional. I'm gonna talk about over emotional because I have a lot of clients who are over emotional and they're like, I'm really in touch with my emotions. I say to you now, if you're over emotional, it's because you're not understanding your emotions. I would say the over emotional women is a very wounded, very feminine energy that you're not connecting to your emotions because they're so painful that you're not investigating, you're running from those emotions, which causes all the overeating, over uh, sex and over all these things, is they're running away. We, we try to distract ourselves. Now, what happens when we don't have enough masculine energy is we can't materialize dreams. Men who are unstable and indecisive, they're in their wounded feminine. They're missing masculine energy. Women who are over demanding, they feel underappreciated they're passive aggressive these kind of things are also lacking masculine energy let's look at a two feminine woman which is missing masculine energy marilyn monroe she had many qualities of the divine feminine which was radiant she was she projected this image of vulnerability she had a lot of beautiful qualities that we will go into later but she was also the wounded feminine <coughs> she was going out in and out of psychiatry hospitals because she was over emotional and she wasn't listening to the messages of her emotions therefore she wasn't understanding herself so when you don't understand yourself you always 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 feel lonely doesn't matter how proud that how many people you have as friends, you will feel lonely. So let's look at unconditional love. We explained it before, but I love unconditional love. So I like to explain it again and again. So it's about accepting others as they are. People have their own wounds. Whatever they're doing to you, they come with their wounds. We don't know what they went through through their childhood. So it's about accepting who they are, but it doesn't mean that you take on other people's baggages or allow them to abuse you as a result. 
So you can accept others without conditions, without demand, allowing others to be who they are without judging them, but at the same time, setting your own boundaries. Now, let's heal the, how we can heal. Actually, this should be heal the feminine, the masculine energy, I should correct this. But, okay, so. Uh, sorry, heal the masculine within the feminine energy is correct. So, boundary setting. So when you want to set boundaries, the first thing you need to do is to take responsibility for your emotions. Taking responsibility is masculine energy. But taking responsibility for your emotions is very important. You need to understand your emotions. You need to be clear what the emotion is trying to tell you. And what's most important, what is it... So you have these different emotions, but what's the most important thing to you at the moment? What's more important, your relationship or this overactive emotion or the current need? Because sometimes we sabotage the relationship because we're so focused on a need that is not so important at the moment. Another thing is when we're women, where the sign of the water, a feminine is like the emotion is the water. It's it goes crazy, it's all over the place. So we need to give it some stability, some direction, some courage. And, and also, um, in order to set our boundaries, we need courage, we need discipline, and we need to be assertive. So we need a lot of masculine energy in order to create boundaries. And in our course, I explain a lot in depth uh, about boundary setting because I feel that a lot of us, the levels of boundary setting, the more we can set boundaries. And it, there's a big difference between boundary setting and cutting people out. Um, some people build walls and that's not what we want to do. We want to direct people to know what it is our boundary and when is allowed to come how far and how close. Now, why don't we set boundaries? We fear rejection and abandonment. We fear confrontation. We have safety concerns. We haven't actually learned how to set healthy boundaries. That's what a lot of people um, are facing at the moment. Now, let's look at the most beautiful energy of all, feminine energy, intuition. We're born with intuition. We perceive emotions. We've been brought up, like we've come to this earth, there's this quote, I love it. It says, you know, I'm a woman. I have a portal between my legs that brings souls into this world. We have the power to create, bring souls into this world. We have the power also to nurture and grow these souls. So when you have a child, the intuition helps you to perceive the child's needs. We need to know when they're hungry, when they're in pain, when they're not well, when the ear is aching, when the tongue is hurt, and when, when they pooped, what, you know, you need to know everything. And that requires intuition. We feel into the emotions. And because we're so intuitive, we, we also perceive the needs of the men in our lives. And because we are able to do it, we perceive that they know also, that they should know. If they love us, they know. But it's not true because they haven't been born with the same amount, like we do have men who are very intuitive, and of course they're more um, they're more balanced, of course. But they don't like a strong intuitive women would be more strong because this is our innate quality. Now let's look at the emotions. What are emotions? Emotions are not out of control; they're just a signal. They are your compass. So when you have a good emotion, it means that something right is happening. You're going towards what you need to go. You're going towards your sole purpose, right? You're going towards something that is working for you. When your emotions feel wrong, then you need to dig deep in it. We need to go into the root of what is happening because that emotion is signaling to you that there's something wrong. So. Let's look at pain as an emotion. When we go and touch a hot oven, we burn. That burn is telling us that it's dangerous, that you shouldn't do this. If you continue to hold your finger to this pan, your finger will melt. 
So it's an indication to pull away. So when an emotion is feeling sad, upset, pain, when you feel pain, we need to go to see what is the message of that pain. And it's so interesting because the most emotional women that come to my sessions with me, a lot of them, when I go to the emotion, what do you feel? Pain. Why do you feel the pain? Some of them can't go into what is the message of the pain. And in order to heal the pain, you need to feel the pain and go into it and dig into the message it's trying to tell you. That's when you become intuitive in connection with your emotions as well. So this I actually explained um, why women are too emotional is because they are not in touch with the essence of their emotions. Now, this is what I have a challenge with sometimes with some clients. I mean, most clients are perfect, but there are some clients that are unable to express their emotions. So look at these emotions. What's the feeling behind rejection, alien, uh, uh, feeling alienated, alienated, sorry, inadequate, jolted? If you're being insecure, you feel inferior, you feel unsure of yourself. Say you're um, feeling anger, um, you may be hateful because you're resentful, you feel violated, you feel bitter. So it's the emotions under the emotions that we need to see, okay, so what caused you to be bitter? What happened? Why are you bitter? What, what need was behind that bitterness that wasn't fulfilled? Uh, I love this. I put it in as an emotional um, measure. Basically, this uh, guy had uh, checked the emotional vibrancy of um, these emotions. And as you see, desire and anger are the strongest of all emotions, but pride is beneath uh, courage, neutrality is higher vibrational energy of emotions. So it's nice to know what emotions have what vibrations, if you can check it and have it to try to be in more positive emotions to get more of what you want in life. Okay, what's the difference between need and needy? So many of my clients come to me and they're like, yeah, but I don't want to be needy. What does neediness really mean? When you're over demanding, when you're over critical, when you're trying to force your will upon a man, you're being needy. Men love needs but they hate neediness. And why is that? When you have a need and you express the need, when you're able to express your needs, so I need this, and you tell the man what it gives you, most often than not, the man will give you that. And if you learn to accept the man's no and not be bitter and resentful about it and ask him again in a different and tell him how it will help you. Can you help me with this? A man will feel that he, will, he needs to help you. So it's always good to ask a man because when men feel needed, they love us more. When, when, we feel, when they see our vulnerability, they love us more. Now let's look at why feminine take on masculine energy. When a woman feels unsafe, unseen, and not understood. And in most of my, um, uh, every, like I would say every session, one of these issues comes up with relationships that they, they have resentment because they feel, actually most of them come up in most cases. So feeling unsafe, unseen, and not understood is the cause of a lot of our problems in relationships. And also the inability to receive. As women, we should be able to receive. We are, we are meant to receive. So um, I always say giving is masculine energy and taking, uh, uh, receiving is feminine energy. And a lot of women say, but yeah, but we women have been, um, most women give much more than men. So most women complain that they're given more in the relationship than men are. Now, why is that? As women, we give to receive. Now, men 
enjoy the pleasure of giving. They like to be needed. I mean, some women also like to be needed, but it's a very masculine quality and a masculine energy. Now, when you actually receive from a man and then appreciate him, he will do more of that for you. And when you are given too much in order to get the guy to do, you stop giving and you start asking. And there's a difference between asking and demanding. So would you please bring me this? Can you please do this for me? Would you help me with this? Help is an amazing word to ask for a man because when they feel that they're helping you, they actually feel more, they're um, more nurturing element comes up and they would want more to give to you. They love you more, they adore you more. And let's look at why we can't receive. We have low self-esteem. We feel that we're not good enough. We might fear that uh, we will get tricked or manipulated if we receive. Maybe we feel unworthy of love or we feel that we don't deserve wonderful gifts that the universe gives us. And we're not able to fully accept the guilt, the gift without feeling guilty. So it results in inability to, to receive a compliment. We can't receive anything without having to, the need to give back. So actually, um, we need to learn to receive and instead of needing to give back, appreciate more. Now let's look at power of vulnerability. Now one of the most attractive qualities we see in people is vulnerability, yet we always fear it because it exposes us. It takes a lot of courage to be vulnerable. And a lot of people think vulnerability is weakness. Vulnerability is not weakness. It's the most courageous act of all. But you need to be able to set boundaries with your vulnerability and also be um, very, um, safe within yourself. So it doesn't matter what other people think or feel about you. And once you're there, you can easily be vulnerable. Without vulnerability, there is no intimacy. So you need to be vulnerable in order to have true intimacy in a relationship. And this goes for both men and women. Now, low self-confidence is fear of what others think about us. It's fear that others see what we lack or make a mistake. We fear uh, it prevents us from getting what we need in life. It prevents us to address our needs, to believe in our needs and ask for what we need because our needs are valid and we need to understand that our needs are valid. <clears throat> now let's look at the difference between confidence and self esteem Confidence describes how we feel our, our ability to perform roles, functions, and tasks. Self-esteem is how we feel about ourselves, the way we look, the way we feel, and whether we feel worthy or valued. Confidence is the ability to be clear-headed and know that whatever we're predicting, we can actually do it. We can, we can manifest it by actioning it out. Confidence comes from the Latin world, federe, which means to trust. So in order to have confidence, we need to trust in ourselves and we have to trust in our env uh, environment. Now, there's a danger in overconfidence as well. So for example, if I'm a, um, I'm not a surgeon. I go and try to perform an act of surgery and think that because I watched a movie on it, I can perform an act of surgery. I'm being very silly. So, and what am I going to do? I'm going to hurt someone or I'm going to hurt myself. So um, there is, there's a difference between confidence and like being too optimistic about our abilities if you like. So uh, these are some mantras for surrender. If you can take pictures of them, it's great. We need to learn um, and surrender doesn't mean that you don't make actions. You do make actions, but at some stage, things don't always go the way we are. But if we trust that there is something, there is a lesson, there is a learning and something better will come out of it, 
we will be able to surrender to life and life becomes less difficult and will come out of our control. So the mantra, who am I not to trust? I mean, who am I not to trust this universe? I'm what I want and I attract what I am. Everything I think is already in existence. Energy is everything that I, th that I think is already in existence. I'm a magnet to it and put there whatever you want, whatever you want to magnetize in your life and know that you can bring it into your reality. Now as women, healing energy is our gift. We heal our friends from pain by listening to them, by talking to them, by advising them. They rant, they heal themselves. We let our friends rant and be healed. So we, we talk to each other, we, we let out our emotions. Now let's look at the quality of self-love. Self-love means to be able to self-discover, to understand ourselves. It's very important to understand yourself. Like the reason why I love my method of healing with Theta Healing is every time I do it, like I understand more about myself, about my environment, about everything. We take responsibility. If we self-love, we take responsibility for our action. That doesn't mean we blame or criticize ourselves. We avoid blame. We nurture ourselves. We take care of ourselves. What does nurture on ourselves mean? If I had a hard day at work and I want to go and have a bubble bath, I do that. I do something as well to make me rejuvenate myself. And also I prioritize myself. So I don't prioritize work always. Sometimes I'll be like, no, I'm tired. I need to go home. I love myself, I give myself more pleasure, I meet my own needs first, and I'm practicing gratitude. Always, always, always practice gratitude. And there's a long, that I have another um, workshop on why gratitude brings things into, how manifestation works, and gratitude is the best way to manifest things. Because when we're in a specific feeling, we bring more of it. If you notice when you're in stress, you bring, uh, things start going wrong. But as soon as you shift your emotions, you either surrender or start putting yourself back into positive emotions, you will see that things move back to getting good again. Venting um, and, be, and stop trying to be perfect and be more authentic without being judgmental of yourself and others and accept yourself as you are. That doesn't mean you don't improve yourself. We always have to work on ourselves. Like if things, if my emotions are hurting me, if I'm in sadness, I always look to the root, the bottom cause of my pain. I, I will go to a healer to heal that issue within me. So I'm more in my positive emotions. So I bring more of what I want into my reality. Now let's look at what is feminine radiance is about living in your full expression, is about feeling life, expressing your living truth. And brightly, oh my God, I, have to, I was supposed to do a meditation as well, but we're running out of time. Now, your essence is light. We are like, how would I explain it? We are like flowers. We radiate our essence. And we pull and draw things to ourselves. We need to do more of that. When we're in our best, we draw people to us. We draw relationship to us. We bring back uh, relationships that were almost dead. Because when you're in radiance, people can't stop but notice you. So how do we become more radiant? We need to do things that bring us alive bring more love into our life, find positive things, positive uh, in every negative situation, everything that happens, there's a positive aspect to it, find positivity in everything and it will change your life. Always act from a place of love and oh my God, beauty is our feminine essence. Now beauty doesn't mean that we need to be beauty, beautiful by 
nature, but we make ourselves beautiful. We work on our hair, we put makeup on, we make our environment beautiful. We have babies, we make them beautiful. We have dogs, we put clothes on them, we make them beautiful. Men don't usually put clothes on their little dogs. So we love to beautify things as feminine essence. And that actually helps a lot with your radiance by, by making yourself feel good. Put that mask uh, to freshen your skin, put some ice on your skin, maybe have a bubble bath with essential oils and the smells that calm and smooth you. The more calm you are, the more you're in your feminine essence, the more you attract all that you want to your life. Now, of course in life, we need to also be in our masculine energy. We can't always be in our uh, feminine energy. We live in a world that puts us in to our masculine. So we need to live to masculine principles and traits as well. Um, but you don't need to become masculine fully. When you come home, you can be feminine. You can just take on the masculine energy when you need it and put it away. When we're too much in our masculine, we stress, we do extra stuff. It ch ch chips away at your radiance. You feel depleted, you feel overwhelmed, you feel life is a struggle. You need to push and pull and try and it's contrary to feminine nature. Now, pay attention to when you need your masculine. When you're on a mission or a project, uh, when you're trying to control situations, when you're trying to make a decision, and when you're success driven, when you're looking for external fulfillment, when you're trying to keep everyone in balance and everyone on track and anywhere you're overworking and too much perfectionism. And then when to switch to your feminine. So basically when you go into your masculine and you're doing all that, know also how to embody your feminine traits. Show up wild and messy. We are the, 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 we are expansive. We are, we are creative. Creation is a, like we are, we take space. We're wild, we're messy, we're carefree. Connect your sensuality to your emotion. Accept and show both your soft and dark sides. Once you accept the dark side, you actually take away the power from the dark side. Soften your heart and command the feminine energy to be there whenever you need it and tap into your flow state of connecting fully to your environment, to, to everything, time will go past. And stop searching outside yourself for happiness. Stop looking, searching for love or freedom or power through the outside avenue. Start giving all that to yourself. Start feeling fulfilled from within. Start substituting your fulfillment with food, with TV, with radio, from, with running, running, with workaholism. And open up and fully feel your energy and start searching and practicing your radiant essence. And remember, in the end of the day, balance is key. Please let me know if you have any questions or anything that I can help you with more. Any questions? Hello, I'm just very curious about what, what is the connection of this uh, topic to the lesbian and gay? To no, what, what? What is the connect relation of this topic to lesbian and gay when it comes to masculinity and femini femininity? Oh, if a woman is, for example, gay. No, yeah, or, okay. or a lesbian, something like that. Well, if you're a lesbian, then you need to, because as a lesbian, you can be either in your feminine essence or your masculine essence, right? But then if you're in your masculine essence, you're more in your masculine quality, then embrace that. But then also as a masculine, you need to take care of yourself. You need to energize yourself. Um, as I said, these qualities of masculine and feminine should be used to in balance, 
So you don't need to know when you need to be in your logical mind, in your analytical mind, and where to take care of yourself. But of course, if you're more of a masculine woman, then you need to um, um, maybe do things that maybe what would intrigue you or put you more in your masculine is to go biking or cycling or anything mm -hmm. like that. So then use what brings you to your best essence. So running, pulling weights, whatever it is. Uh, okay, <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> My pleasure. Is there any other questions or? No one else has questions? I will just pull one card that has a message for all of us and I will read it for us. It's the soulful woman and is about the qualities of masculine and feminine. And actually I'll pull two and I will ask two messages that we can take away with us today. So let me quickly. Oh, I think there are some questions here. Ah, oh, Sarah. Hi, I'm not sure exactly what I want to know. So happy to be uh, okay. Uh, how to balance those and do Okay, so how the imbalance of masculine and feminine. Oh, this was at the beginning you asked. Okay, Anna. Um, masculine. Anna, did you understand already the feminine trauma towards the masculine? If not, please write again so I will answer you. Oh, yeah, yeah. This was from the beginning. So you oh, okay. so know you beautifully. Know. Thank you so, so much. <laughs> My pleasure. Oh, wow. Thank you very much. Okay, so let me pull the cards for you guys. So I'm going to pull two cards that has a message for all of us. We're only four, so... So fearless self-love, we all have to become more fearless self-love. Whenever I choose to love myself, no matter the circumstances surrounding me, I'm practicing fearlessness. And let me read it because I love these messages that is more, more um, it's beautiful. I love myself fearlessly. I love myself as beautiful, good, and worthy, no matter what else is happening around me. My self-love keeps me well and happy. I nourish my self-love with daily acts of sacred self-care. This is a source of my true power. I listen to and value the guidance of my inner wisdom. In the face of neg negative messages and faulty beliefs, I return to my natural feminine as my core and celebrate this grounded of being within myself. And I always return to self-love. In this way, I practice fearlessness. And there's one more card, <clears throat> Princess Charming. And it says, <clears throat> I take the horse by the reins and become my own Prince Charming, taking care of my own needs. So in order for you to ask for your needs, you should also take care of your needs as well. <clears throat> and my own Princess Charming, I no longer wait for a Prince Charming to ride up on his trustworthy white horse. Instead, I take the horse by the reins, loving myself and taking care of my own financial security. In this way, I make sure I'm safe as I move through this amazing world. The process is an important step in my empowerment and expansion as a woman. By taking the reins of life, I integrate the divine feminine and the divine masculine energies within my own being. I honor the strengths and gifts of both these energies into my own life lived experience. <clears throat> Thank you very much. If you have any more questions, please tell me. Thank you very much, Elizabeth, for your kind words. And thanks, Anna. Anything else? Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a lovely evening, all. Take care.